Do you want to know how much money I plan to have in my Roth IRA in 30 years? Over $500,000. It's not because I'm smarter than you or anything like that. The only reason is because I actually invest in my Roth IRA every single year. But don't worry because I want you to have as much money as I will or hopefully even more. So in this video, I'm gonna pull back the curtains to go over what you need to know and the things you need to think through before you start investing in a Roth IRA. If you don't think about these things now, then you'll just end up opening a Roth IRA account and possibly wasting money investing in something just because you didn't know. I'll specifically touch on who can invest in a Roth IRA, your investment options, choosing where to invest your Roth IRA, and also thinking through the types of allocation you may want to choose. Because I know this video might get a little bit long, I'll have a timestamp down in the comments for you to skip around for whatever you're looking for. You can also check out the description for playlists on different personal finance topics. Check it out when you're ready. Please hawk smash that thumbs up button and leave a comment down below letting me know if you have or have not started investing in your Roth IRA. You can also leave any other investment questions when it comes to Roth IRA or general investing questions as well if you would like. If you need a little general refresher on what a Roth IRA is, then I made a video about that. I will throw the link in the description for you to check out. First off, you need to know that anyone who has a job that has an earned income that is taxed is able to invest in a Roth IRA. Yes, this even means a 16 year old can invest in a Roth IRA as long as he or she has a job. This also means that you can, and in my opinion should, invest in an IRA even if you have a 401k through your current job. Before we get into it, I want to mention that I am not giving you investment advice at all. These are my thoughts, my opinions. This is for informational purposes only. Please contact a professional if you have any further questions. That's my disclaimer. What most people get stuck on is what in the heck should they be investing in? Now, I agree that this can be a little bit overwhelming. There are so, so many options that we kind of get decision fatigue and end up not investing in a Roth IRA at all. I am not going to tell you exactly what to invest in, but I'll lay out some of the more popular options and give you my personal opinion on the ones that I prefer. Once again, I am not telling you what to do with your money. Do any additional research that you need to make a decision that aligns with your situation. In a Roth IRA, you can invest in things from real estate investment trusts, which are called REITs sometimes, a single stock, to target date funds, to index funds, to bonds, and all kinds of other alternative investments like that. The first option we'll go over is is investing in single stocks. This is one you're probably more familiar with because it's where you buy a share of a single company. While you can make money investing in one company, you're at a higher risk of losing money since you're putting all of your money into one company. It's like having a bag with one egg in it, then dropping that bag on the ground. There is a higher likelihood that that one egg is gonna break because it's the only one in the bag. You can decide to spread out your risk by buying shares of multiple stocks from any of the thousands of companies companies that are traded on the stock market. This would be like putting multiple eggs in a bag. If you drop that bag, then your odds of breaking all of the eggs would greatly decrease. But the problem with investing in single stocks in your Roth IRA is that out of the thousands and thousands of companies traded on the stock market, how do you know which ones are winners and how do you know which ones are losers? I agree that there are different ways to evaluate a company to decide if you should buy or not, but it's not as easy as it sounds and it takes quite a bit of time to even come close to being good at it. So while you can invest in single stocks and a lot of people make money from doing this, it's a lot more risky for someone who isn't interested in spending the time to evaluate all of those different companies. Another investment option for your Roth IRA could be a target date retirement fund. These are extremely popular within a lot of company sponsored 401ks because they are super, super simple to invest in. Just like a company sponsored 401k, you do have the ability to invest in a target date fund through your Roth IRA. The fund you choose is all based on the year you plan to retire. A target date fund holds many different investments to spread your risk among many different things. I'll walk you through an example in a minute. The allocation of how your money is invested is based on the date you plan to retire. These funds basically handle the management of how your money is invested, so it's less that you kind of have to worry about on a day-to-day -day basis. For example, Vanguard lists these target date funds like this, 
target retirement than the year that you plan to retire. You'll notice that these are in increments of five years because if you're within five years of retiring, Vanguard is assuming your strategy isn't going to change very much. Looking at the investments within the Vanguard Target Retirement 2065 Fund, VLXVX, you'll see that the majority of the fund is invested in different stock market index funds. We'll talk about index funds in a minute. Since a person investing in this fund isn't planning to retire for another 46 years, the fund manager has less money invested into less risky bonds, 10% to be exact. The further you are from retirement, the more risky your investments can be so that you can capitalize on the upside of the stock market over the long term to grow your money. Investing for the long term also gives you the ability to make up for any of those years that the stock market is down. The market generally rises over the long run. Over 36 years from 1985 to 2015, the S&P 500 was up 27 of those years, which means it was only down nine of those 36 years. So it was basically up 75% of the time. Next, we have index funds, specifically low cost index funds. I'll be straight up with you and tell you that these are probably my favorite investment vehicles for my Roth IRA. Index funds are funds that hold many different single stocks. The goal of an index fund is usually to match another index within the stock market. Probably the most famous and most popular index to try to mimic is the S&P 500. For example, Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, VTSAX, holds over 3,400 different stocks and different amounts within each stock. On their website, they give you a breakdown of the 10 largest holdings for this fund and also what percentage of the fund is invested into different sectors. So the top 10 investments are spread among many of the largest companies in the world from Microsoft to Apple to Amazon to ExxonMobil. Financial services, technology, healthcare, and consumer services are some of the largest sectors that the VTSAX fund invests in. Once again, the goal of an index fund like VTSAX is to mimic what the total stock market is doing. VTSAX does this by investing in all of the companies that are in the S&P 500 index and then some because they're essentially investing in over 3,400 companies. As we know, over the long run, the stock market has has gone up. This fund's goal is to help you benefit from the overall rise in the stock market. So investing in a total stock market index fund like VTSAX, VFIAX, or their ETFs, which are VTI and VOO, gives you a good chance of a return that is about the same as the total stock market over the long run. The fees for index funds are usually cheaper because it's not being actively managed by a fund manager. One thing to pay attention to is that some index funds will hold very little or even zero bonds in their portfolio. So if you're managing your investments on your own, then you'll kind of need to think about how much you also want to invest in bonds based on when you plan to retire. We'll cover more about that once we get into the allocation part later in this video. Now we have mutual funds. On the surface, some mutual funds may look like a low cost index fund, but the big difference is that most mutual funds are actively managed by a fund manager. Just a heads up that some people will refer to a low cost index fund as a mutual fund. For the purposes of not confusing you in this video, think of a mutual fund and an index fund as two separate things. Mutual funds are made up of many, many different investments. The type of investments each mutual funds ho fund holds is based on what the fund manager chooses to buy and sell. The cost of owning shares or the expense ratio in a mutual fund is usually high because of the many people working for that particular fund like the fund manager and the people who work under him or her to decide which which stocks to buy and sell. Because the buying and selling of investments is up to the fund manager, you're basically betting that that fund manager knows how to pick investments that will beat the stock market and give you a higher return on your investment. There have been many different studies that show that over the long term, fund managers aren't that good at guessing what to buy. I'm not telling you not to invest in mutual funds, but I'm just saying that I never would because of the high fees associated with most of them and the fact that the odds of that fund manager beating the market is extremely slim. So slim that the famous Warren Buffett once bet a fund manager $1 million on it. The fund manager was able to choose five mutual funds and bet that one of those five funds would beat the performance of the S&P 500 or the 500 largest publicly traded companies. Just a reminder, back to our index fund talk, VOO, 
that low cost index funds fund matches the S&P 500 and they invest in everything that the S&P 500 invests in. This bet lasted 10 years and the S&P outperformed every single one of those five funds that that fund manager chose, which is another reason that I like low cost total stock market index funds like VTSAX, VTI, VOO, and I forget what the other one is. I'll put it on the screen. Lastly, you can invest in bonds within your Roth IRA. Now, bonds are a lot less volatile, so their price generally isn't going to fluctuate as much as any of the other investment options that I mentioned before. We'll go more into using bonds within your Roth IRA in the allocation section of this video. Knowing exactly where to invest your Roth IRA is not as difficult as it might sound. There's so many different places for you to choose from that I'm only going to lay out a few of them for you. Each platform has its pros and cons based on your level of knowledge at this point in time. While the more important part of this whole thing is what you invest in, choosing a platform is going to help you decide which investment options that you have. I do not want this decision to hold you up from funding your Roth IRA with at least something as soon as possible. Keep in mind that you can open and fund a Roth IRA with multiple companies at once. As long as you don't exceed that yearly maximum that you're allowed, either $6,000 if you're single or $12,000 if you're married filing jointly, then you're good to go. For example, if you decide to invest $1,000 this year in a Roth IRA through Fidelity, then realize that you like the investment options that M1 Finance offers just a little bit better, then you can turn around and open a Roth IRA with M1 Finance and start funding that account with up to $5,000 $5, more dollars for the current year. Because $1,000 plus $5,000 equals $6,000. The first option I want to mention are robo-advisors. In my opinion, the three best companies in this space are Betterment, Wealthfront, and M1 Finance, which is kind of like a hybrid robo-advisor. With a robo-advisor like Betterment and Wealthfront, you basically pick your goals and they choose how to invest your money based on these goals. They'll usually invest your money into low-cost index funds, like we said before, are really good, like the ones that Vanguard offers. I love these options for people who just kind of want to throw their money in every single month and let someone else handle the investing for a very reasonable fee. M1 Finance is probably my favorite investment platform out of these three options. It's the main one that I've been starting to use with all of my Roth IRA money. I'll throw a link in the description for you to open an account with M1 Finance or you can watch for the review that I did on M1 Finance. I'll throw the link in the description to that video. M1 Finance is kind of like a hybrid robo-advisor for many different reasons that I don't really have time to get into in this video, let me know in the comments below if you want me to make a more detailed video about how to actually invest with M1 Finance. Next, your option would be to invest through one of the larger financial services companies. These would be companies like Vanguard, which I love, Fidelity, and Charles Schwab. These are all great places to invest your Roth IRA money. I like all of these options for hands-on investors and even passive investors as well. Even though you can invest through these companies more passively, to get started and get things set up, you'll need to at least have a little bit of knowledge when it comes to investing so that you know what to look for. If you want me to make a video to help you out more with this, leave a comment down below and let me know. Next, we have investment advisors. Now, you have to be really, really careful with who you're working with if you choose to have an advisor help you. There's different types of investment advisors like brokers or even insurance agents. You want to avoid these people because they basically make a commission on what they get you to invest in. This is problematic because their investment recommendations could be ones that benefit them more than it benefits you. What's even more messed up is that this horrible practice is completely legal. If you really, really want a financial advisor then make sure that he or she is a fiduciary and they are always working with you as a fiduciary. These types of advisors are legally required to keep your best interest in mind when advising you what to invest in. The brokers and insurance agent people are not, which becomes a huge, huge conflict of interest since they are usually pushing investment products on you with insanely high fees because they get some sort of a lucrative kickback. The last area you need to know about when it comes to your Roth IRA is what you want your asset allocation to be based on different 
different asset classes like the ones that we talked about earlier in this video. For the sake of simplicity, think of it like this. Out of 100%, what percentage of your money do you want invested in things that could grow your money? And what percentage do you want invested in bonds, which are a lot less risky and a little bit more stable? For example, someone who is younger that doesn't plan on needing their retirement money for another, we'll say 40 years, might choose a 95-5 allocation. 95% of their investments are in things that have the have a higher potential to grow, like single stocks, index funds, REITs, and things like that. And 5% of their money is in bonds, which like we said, is a little bit less risky and a little bit more stable. You could also have a person who is five years from retirement that has enough in their retirement portfolio who wants their money to have the potential to kind of grow a little bit and still be safe at the same time. This person might choose a 60-40 split. 60% of their money is investments that have the potential to grow and 40% of their money are in, is, in, is in bonds. One strategy some people use to determine their allocation is by taking 110 minus your age, and that's how much money that you should have in assets that could grow. So if you were 40 years old and you wanted to use that logic, then you would take 110 minus 40, which equals 70. This line of thinking would say to invest 70% of your money into things like single stocks, index funds, REITs, etc. and 30% of that money into bonds. One of the main problems with this strategy is that everyone is in different financial situations at any given age. For example, if you and I were both 40 years old and we each wanted to have $1.5 million in our por portfolio by the age of 60, you have one million, a $1 million por portfolio right now and I only have $100,000 in my portfolio, then do you think our investment allocations would look exactly the same? Probably not. I would most likely need to be investing more aggressively, which means that I would have more money in growth assets and less in more stable investments like bonds. Your asset allocation needs to be based on where you are today and where you need to be by the time you wanna start withdrawing that money for retirement. So it has to be based on your specific needs, your specific goals, how much you're willing and able to save and invest every year, and when you'll need that money. This is where a fiduciary financial advisor would come into play, especially if you feel like you're way behind when it comes to your retirement investments. Now, I know a lot about personal finance and I feel very comfortable and confident with my investment decisions and strategy, but I can tell you that once I'm about 50, 55, maybe 60, I'll meet with a fiduciary financial advisor. Not because I'm afraid I've made any huge mistakes, but just because it will be beneficial to have another set of eyes and kind of get a different perspective on what I should be doing with my portfolio at that point in time, since I'll be so much closer to needing that money. I look at it as hiring a teammate or a coach, if you will. So while I'd love to tell you what your allocation should be, I'm not going to because I don't know your specific situation. For me, I can tell you that I won't need any of my retirement money for another 30 plus years. So I am heavily invested in assets that have a higher upside of growing. My current split is 95% in growth investments, kind of like low cost index funds and 5% in bonds. Now, I might eventually go to a 90-10 split, but for now, I am good with a 95-5 split. So that's what I'm sticking with. Another reason my split is 95-5 is because I'm pretty financially stable. It's only this way because I am debt-free, I have a large emergency fund, I have time on my side, and I am maxing out all of my retirement accounts every single year. Check out the links in the description for different playlists and resources that will help you with all of your personal finance needs. Don't forget to hawk smash that thumbs up button and hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you want more personal finance videos just like this one. I'll see you in the next one, friends. Adios.